So a lot of people had some questions about my Dark Souls 2 boss tier list that was added to this video right here, the good and bad of Dark Souls 2. And it's understandable why people questioned it, because I'm not gonna lie, I threw it together very quickly. And because of that, a lot of you actually asked me to make a boss tier list video. And so I decided, yeah, why not? So welcome to... Alright, so our first boss encounter in Dark Souls 2 happens to be the Last Giant. Though the Last Giant boss fight really isn't hard at all. He has roughly 4 or 5 attacks, 2 of them being stomps, 1 of them he accidentally falls on you. Halfway through the fight he's getting so angry that this tiny little puny thing is hurting him that he rips his own arm off to use as a sword. He could have just pulled the pillar or whatever that is attached to him out of him and used that as a weapon, but no, he decides he's gonna rip his own arm off because that's how cool he is and tries to beat the living hell out of you with it. But sadly, even after he rips his arm off, he forgot he's in a FromSoft game, and he's a big enemy, which means you can just stay underneath him. So as a first boss, the last giant is definitely mid, however, I would probably say overall, rating all of these bosses together, he's definitely below average. He's just kind of basic. The next boss fight we have is the Pursuer. I actually think the Pursuer is well designed, he looks super cool. It's annoying how many times you actually have to fight him in Scholar of the First Sin Edition. Again, annoying meaning just repetitive, not hard or anything like that, because after 8 tries you become a master at slaughtering him. He's semi fast with about 5 or 6 attacks, and he definitely hits hard. However, after a couple tries you can get the basic idea down of when you need to dodge. And because this is a FromSoft game, moving to the right helps a lot. So I would say with the design, look and feel of this boss, he is definitely good. Not too hard, not really easy until you understand his movesets. I would definitely say harder than The Last Giant, but definitely easier than some of the other bosses we're going to be going over. Next up, the Ruined Sentinels. So as soon as you walk into this boss fight, you see three boss health bars. Which when I first play this, I went, oh cool, I'm going to have to be fighting three bosses. Time to waste hours. But then you quickly realize the other two don't aggro until you defeat the first one. So it kind of turns this boss fight into a two-parter, where you fight one and then you have to fight two. The standalone one you fight, I want to say has like three attacks he does not have that many attacks at all and once you fight him you come to realize that if it was just one guy in this room this would be the easiest boss fight in probably all of dark souls at least dark souls 2 because it is ridiculously easy to just walk to the right that's all you have to do all of his swings are really big they're really wide swings and they are very easily dodgeable or you can just walk around them and they also really like to choreograph all their attacks so you know something is coming the only time this boss fight even kind of gets a little hard is when both of them are attacking you at once. And if I were to guess, people probably kept dying to this boss simply because they would run up, try to hit one of them a little bit too many times than they were supposed to, and they would get hit by the second one that's just waiting for you to walk up. So I would say the Ruined Sentinels is definitely a below average fight. Next up we got the Lost Center. I actually really enjoy the Lost Sinners fight, but I like more than just the fight, there's also the arena that makes this fight special to me. Because you can fight this boss in two different ways, you can fight her in pitch black, which if you're playing the vanilla version is just pitch not black at all because the lighting in there kind of sucks. So even after she extinguishes all the flames, you can still clearly see from one side to the other. However, in Scholars of the First Sin, they fixed this and made that room very dark. So fighting her in pitch black kind of sucks. However, they also made it easier to get the key so that way you can light up the torches around the area. Fighting her in the pitch black, if you don't stay up against her boobies, you're, you're gonna lose sight of her immediately. And like a lot of bosses in Dark Souls, they're men, so you have to kind of press yourself up against their balls to make the fight a little bit easier. The Lost Center is a woman. She doesn't have balls. Maybe. I don't. I, I, I don't know. But press yourself up against her boobies. But if the room is lit, you don't have to do this at all. You can actually stay away from her. However, I would probably argue staying closer to her makes more sense. Staying away from her, she has some really long and kind of fast sped up attacks, which could catch you off guard if you're not paying too much attention or if you're not yet familiar with her moveset. So where would I put the Lost Sinner? I'm probably going to put her in Amazing. I actually think she's really good. Next up, we got the Dragon Rider. Again, like I said before, we're in a FromSoft game, so if you just press yourself up against his nuts and move to his right, most of his attacks won't hit you. You won't even really need to dodge. This fight is incredibly easy. I actually think the other boss fight in this exact area is harder and overall a better fight. There's also a really easy way to cheese this boss. If you don't raise any of the platforms in the boss arena, you walk through the fog gate and you stand next to the path. When he goes to attack you, roll towards him and he'll just fall off the platform. I've personally never done this, but I've seen people do it and it's funny. So even though you can kind of change or manipulate the boss arena, it's not as cool as the Lost Center. So we're going to put this chubby bitch into below average. Next up, we got the old Dragon Slayer or Silver Ornstein. I actually really enjoy this fight. I like Ornstein. I thought he was cool in Dark Souls 1. A lot of people feel like it was just lazy to port him over to Dark Souls 2. I felt like it was kind of a fanfare or fan service in that way. But I think he has a cool moveset. It differs from his moveset 
set in Dark Souls 1. However, you also get to see that by himself in Dark Souls 1, he might have been a little too easy. Because even though he's semi-hard, not really, but semi-hard in Dark Souls 2, he's definitely easier than Ornstein and Smaug. So when you take away his partner, you see he's kind of easy. But for the old Dragon Slayer, even though I actually do want to put him in good, because I actually think he's good, he is still a reused boss from a different game that isn't changed up that much, only a small color difference, and maybe a few added moves. So I'm actually going to put him in mid. Next up, we got the Covetous Demon. This Java the Gut inspired enemy is not hard at all. I honestly don't even remember if any of his attacks hurt me, or if he's ever been able to really attack me. Unless I'm just messing with him and I forget to roll out when he's rolling, he normally doesn't hit me at all. His boss room is pretty cool, you can shoot down those containers that are above him, which when they break releases an enemy, he'll walk over and aggro to them for some reason, eat them which allows you to get free hits on him, but I do believe your damage goes down to about 30 or 40% for each hit. And if he's able to actually grab you, which is a very long windup, it looks like he eats you and you assume you're dead, but he spits you out completely naked. I don't even think you have your sword in your hand. Overall, Pizza the Hut isn't really that good of a design, if I'm being honest. Like, sure, he looks kind of cool, but it would have been cooler if he was implemented better. So he is poopy. Next up, we got Mytha, the Baneful Queen. I actually really like the design of this boss. She's essentially Medusa, and I always thought Medusa was a cool character. If you fight her without burning the windmill, you're probably going to have a tough time. The reason that is is because her boss area is full of poison water, which continuously heals her and also continuously hurts you. So if you torch the big windmill out front, it allows that boss area to lose all of its poison or at least the majority of it. Yeah, she can still heal herself when she goes on the outskirts of the arena. But I also realized when she notices she's getting hurt, she doesn't wander over there. Like the AI isn't that smart. So every time she would wander over and heal herself, it was because I was getting too close to her and she was backing away. That would have been a really cool design for her to look around and be like, where the hell is my poison? And then when she starts to get hurt, she like scamples over and tries her hardest to heal. But no, instead all aggro is locked onto you and so she tries her hardest to hurt you and it, if you get too close to her, she'll back away healing herself. So even though she has a cool design, she's kind of fast in some of her attacks but kind of slow in others. And she has a magic attack where she throws her head, that was really cool. I would say overall Mytha is pretty mid. Next up, we have the Smelter Demon. The boss arena is pretty cool, but the design of him is really cool. I actually overall like the look and aesthetic that he has. He also has like two half phases, I would say, one where he kind of lights up, the other one where he lights his sword up or sets his sword on fire. He's slightly annoying because if you're close to him at all, he will constantly be burning you. But he's not too hard at all with like five or six different moves. And if you stay close to him and from soffit, aka move to the right, you should have no problem beating him. The only thing that I really found annoying about this boss is every time he swings his weapon, he makes this noise. I don't know why, <laughs> after you fight him for long enough, that noise just gets annoying. Especially the blue smelter demon that we're going to be talking about eventually. He has way more health, so you hear that noise constantly for every swing. So overall, where would I put the smelter demon? I'm going to put him in mid. Because again, even though I like his aesthetic, I like his design, his moveset isn't that hard to learn. He has a few annoying things about him and he's just overall not that great. Next up we have the old Iron King. Absolutely love the design of this boss. I think it's cool. It reminds me of something from maybe Demon Souls if I'm remembering right because I think they have a few big demons there. But he's just cool. He's a cool boss. I want to say he has about four or five attacks but two of them are just big slam attacks. Two of them are just fire attacks. Actually you know what? He has probably about five or six attacks now because two of them are slam attacks. Two of them are fire breath attack. One of them is an a, a, a fire beam attack that he does. You know what? No, he definitely has more. He definitely has more than five or six. It's probably like seven or eight because he swings at you a few times too. But they're all essentially kind of the same. So when you boil it down, the reason I thought he had like four or five attacks is because even though two of these attacks differ in some small way, they are essentially the same attack. Like for instance, his fire breath, he has a long range fire breath and a medium range fire breath. In my eyes, it's essentially the same, but it's not at the same time. Or like he'll have two of these stomp attacks, one where he uses one arm, the other one where he's uses both. So even though this boss looks cool as hell and I absolutely love his boss arena, even though it's a little too small, I will admit that you can accidentally fall off like I have or be pushed off because you're up against his head when he's doing his fire breath. And because he rotates like a clock, eventually he just pushes you off on accident. I would say that the old Iron King is in the mid. So the next box we're going to be looking at is the Belfry Gargoyles. So in the past about a month and a half, I have played Dark Souls, different versions of course, but Dark Souls 2 at least five times. And three of those five times I made sure 
where I beat the gargoyles. And in one of those playthroughs, I even went in New Game Plus the area twice. Having said that, I wasn't doing it because it's a fun boss or I liked it. It's because I wanted a ring. Because this boss, I genuinely do not like. Dark Souls 1 had a really good balance when it came to the gargoyles fight. This one, it just feels like they throw too much at you at once. Like maybe they thought in Dark Souls 1 that fight was a little too easy. So instead of throwing one at you and then once his health is half, they throw another one at you. I swear in Dark Souls 2, they're like every 30 seconds, we got to throw another one. I think at one point, if you don't fight them fast enough, you will be fighting five at once. So hopefully I have some gameplay of this because honestly, I don't want to go back and fight them. Of course, if I have to, I will. But honestly, I think this fight is boring and tedious as hell. That's all I really have to say about it. It's not like it's even that hard. It's, it's only hard because they throw so many at you. They're very easily dodgeable. They, they telegraph like crazy. And so because I don't think that they're a well-built fight at all, I'm not going to spend much longer on it. Belfry Gargoyle fight is 100% going in poopy. It sucks. Actually, what am I saying? It's it's it's, it's a jazz dumpster. <laughs> it's 100% a jazz dumpster. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. What is a jazz dumpster? It <laughs> It's dumb. But you can't really say certain things on YouTube. So I made jazz another word for J-I-Z-Z, -Z, if that makes sense. So it's a jazz dumpster. Next up, we have the Flexile Sentry. And even though this boss is not hard at all, I actually find him to be incredibly easy. I also think it's just a really cool designed boss. Having a conjoint twin fight you, it's just a cool idea overall. Little tip, if you are fighting him, make sure to fight the hammer side and not the sword side. The sword side's just a little faster. Even if the hammer side hits a little harder, he's slower, so it's easier to dodge. And don't try to take your time on this boss, because the arena will eventually fill up with water enough so that way you can't really roll fast or move fast at all and then eventually I don't know how long because it, it definitely takes a while but eventually the room will fill up so high that you're just gonna die from drowning actually you know what I don't even know if that's true because I have never allowed the water to fill up so high that it does drown you eventually but supposedly it does drown you after like I don't even know 15 minutes maybe so the flexile century where would I put that fight 100% it is a mid fight he's not too hard not too easy I like his design his arena is kind of cool he's in a ship and it's sinking so you're kind of fighting against time if he was a little bit harder with maybe a few more unique attacks he would probably be good but for right now he's just basic he's mid this next boss we're going to talk about i'm going to let you guys know right up front i have a huge all of this is really a bias but i have a huge bias against this boss the duke's dear freya i think that's how you pronounce it freya i don't exactly know it, it might be freja <laughs> I, i'm not 100 sure but i'm pretty sure it's freya because it reminds me of a nordic style name anyways this boss i absolutely hate it is annoying, it's stupid, it's tedious, it takes way too long. And the reason that is is because you can only attack its head. It's, oh god, and, and it also makes no sense. So the spider's whole body is super armored, but its head isn't? Why? I'm walking around with a gut style sword. I should be able to cut this thing in half. And in the scholar's version, they add a bunch of these tinier spiders. Sure, you can get rid of them pretty quickly. They're not hard at all. Especially if they group together, one swing will usually take like four of them out. And you can also use the torch while fighting him so that way those spiders just kind of leave you alone and you can deal with the big guy or girl. But no, screw this boss. It's annoying. It's tedious. I don't like that you only have to hit the head. If you're using a slow weapon like I am, the, the amount of time that you get one swing off She's ready to attack you immediately, so you get hit a lot. Eventually, I did come up with kind of a cheese way to do it. As soon as she does this beam attack, I rush into the other side, which is also a head. <laughs> its butt is its head, and I rush in and I start hitting that a few times. Then I back away and I let it do the beam attack again. Is it cheesy? Sure, but this boss is cheesy. So for the Duke's Dear Freya, I'm going to say this boss isn't just a jazz dumpster. She is a jazz factory. Boom, right there. I'd rather fight the spider in Chamber of Secrets in PlayStation 2 than I would this thing. Next, we're going to be looking at the Ancient Dragon. There's not really much to say about this boss fight because he's pretty easy as long as you know how to run. When he jumps up in the air, you run straight towards his tail and hope and pray that you're running fast enough for that fire not to hit you. Because if you are not the right level, that fire will one-shot you. Even if sometimes you are the right level, that fire will one-shot you. He is incredibly strong with a lot of health. However, he is also incredibly easy. So not much to say about this one if I'm being honest so the ancient dragon he's gonna go into below average he would have been much cooler if maybe he flew away and swiped down did some swipe attacks kind of like the dragon in the first DLC the slumbering dragon even though that dragon is very annoying sometimes it would have been cool if the ancient dragon had that type of moveset instead of just hovering. Next up, we're going to be looking at the rotten. And honestly, what can I say about this boss? I actually really enjoy the rotten. His character design is very, very cool. His boss arena is pretty cool. Semi annoying sometimes. He is sadly a little easy. However, again, this is coming from someone who has played this game for oh, probably close to two, 300 hours now. So of course, all these bosses are going to become much easier for me than someone else. I would still say overall, this boss is pretty easy. 
but his design, the way he moves, the way he looks, his attacks, they're all very cool. You can even cut off his arm and get a human effigy, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I did that. I don't, I don't think I'm... I don't think I'm mistaken. So overall, where would I put the rotten? In my last one, I'm pretty sure I made him top tier. I actually think he's amazing. I know, most of you probably won't agree. I personally enjoy him a lot. I think he's a well-designed boss. Now it's time for the rip-off Q-Lag. We have the Scorpion Woman. Is her name Scorpion Nadja? Scorpi Scorpion Naka? I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Nadja? I have no idea. So the Scorpion Woman, or the rip-off Q-Lag. I actually think she's pretty well-designed. She could look a little cooler. Her boss arena is kind of mid, if I'm being honest. And I would say she's a little harder than some of these bosses, but not too much. Maybe even half a step harder. She does have a few annoying attacks, like her magic ones. And you can also befriend her husband, and her husband will help slaughter her which I find to be hilarious. So for the Scorpion Nadja or Naka, I don't know how to pronounce it. We're actually going to make her mid. Oh, now come on now. Mid. There we go. She's not that great. She's not that bad either. She's definitely in the mid tier. Bellstat the Royal Argus or the Bell Knight. And what can I say about this boss? Really cool design. Kind of a mid boss arena. You can't really do anything with it. But a very cool design. I would say his attack pace is pretty on point. It's not too fast. It's definitely not too slow. He has a second phase, kind of like a lot of these bosses where he eventually adds spells to the mix. It's not really a second phase, I guess. It's more of a power-up. But overall, I actually thoroughly enjoy this boss. And so because of everything I said, I'm gonna have to put the Bell Knight in our first sexy category. Next up, we got the Skeleton Lords, which you think they would have had an easy win with this. They did an amazing job with their skeleton boss in Dark Souls 1, but honestly, this boss is just really easy. I was killing the main summoners in one hit. I will say it's definitely smarter to kill one main and then kill off all the things it summons when it dies, or you could just do what I do, which was slaughter all three and then take care of all the, I don't know, 15 or so skeletons that spawn after they die. Overall, not too good of a boss, if I'm being honest, very easy. The boss arena looks pretty cool, but you can't manipulate it in any way. So where would I put the skeleton lords? I'm sorry, they're gonna have to go into poopy. I probably had as much fighting them as I did the covetous demon. Next up, we have the executioner's chariot. And I think if we were to fight this boss like any normal boss, as in you walk in, it's there, and then you just fight one-on-one, -on -one, this boss would be incredibly easy and probably would go in the poopy tier. However, they did add kind of a cool twist to it where he spins around in a circle constantly and you have to kill the summoners around the area to make sure none of the skeletons keep spawning. And then you flip a switch, he runs into a gate, and then you finally fight the horse because it knocks the chariot off or dislocates the chariot, I don't know, it disconnects it. It's kind of a cool challenge within a boss fight. It doesn't really add too much difficulty, I just overall think it's a good idea. So I'm actually going to be putting the Executioner's Chariot in good. I think overall it is pretty cool. Next up we have the Twin Dragon Riders. D do I really need to give like a, like a true score for this one? I made the original below average. So fighting two of them is below average. <laughs> like they, 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 it has to go there. Just because you fight another one doesn't make it better. It honestly makes it a little worse. But thankfully, the other one they throw in, with my attack anyways, I killed him and I want to say two hits? Maybe three, but I think it was two. So after you defeat that one, you're just left with one Dragon Rider that you already did before. When you were much weaker. Actually, you know what? I've cha I, I changed my thought. It, he is poopy. <laughs> like, yeah, he's poopy. Comment down below if you agree with that switch. I... 100% agree with it. This is my permanent score. That's where he's going to be. Next up, we got the Demon of Song. And even though I hate the area that this boss is in, I, I hate the area before it, that is the Shrine of Amana. I actually really like the design of this boss. I think he's a really cool looking boss. I don't like that you can only really attack him when his skeleton is exposed. However, even though I like his design and the boss arena is kind of cool-ish, I guess, this boss is incredibly easy. I don't remember exactly, but I feel like he has maybe three attacks. So I would have to put the Demon of Song in probably mid solely because I like his design if his design was different or he didn't look as cool he would be going below next up we got the looking glass knight and I think this boss is one of the top tier I'm just gonna say it right now one of the top tier bosses in Dark Souls 2 so for the looking glass knight I'm just gonna already throw him in the sexy category I think he's awesome but I will talk further into why I think he's awesome number one his design is cool I don't know anything about the lore I'm not gonna lie I'm not even gonna pretend to know but I actually I really like his helmet as well it reminds me of and again this could be attacking it if I'm being honest but it, it reminds me of something Christian almost it's got the three heads you know the Trinity and also the crown of thorns again i have no idea if this is actually connected at all it probably isn't but when i first saw him that's what i've been thinking since i first saw him 
I thought it was really cool. But never mind that, I think his boss arena is really cool. I think that his armor set is really cool. His move set's very nice. I really like how he's able to summon other people. And, and honestly, these people aren't difficult to fight. So that's why I would put Looking Glass in the sexy category. Comment down below if you disagree. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the Royal Rat Vanguard, which I'm just gonna do this real quick. And right here. I think everyone should understand why I put him there. He's essentially just a gank. You have to run around defeating a bunch of rats, which is very easy. Unless you do it too soon, then holy crap, are you going to get pummeled? But if you do it later in the game, I mean, rats are nothing. One hit, one hit with my great sword and all of them were dying. I guess if you put your own level into this grading, he might be poopy. The Royal Rat Vanguard might be poopy, but no, it's a jazz dumpster for me. It's boring. There's no reason for it. It doesn't even feel like a boss. It just feels like you're fighting a bunch of rats with one kind of stronger rat with a mohawk. Next up, we got the Royal Rat Authority. And so real quick, the Royal Rat Authority, he's in mid. I'll give my reason why right now. Yes, the tiny little rats around him are very annoying and don't let them hit you because you will get toxic way too fast. And if you're toxic, you might as well just accept death because you're not healing fast enough. Well, there's a chance you might, but you're probably going to die. However, when you finally clear out enough of those dudes and the rat comes down, especially if you have my weapon, then you clear him very quickly. The giant dog-like rat comes down, which reminds me of Sith. In all honesty, it might actually even be the same code, but I do actually like his design. I think his design is really cool. You can't really tell if if it's a dog or a rat, I'm pretty sure it's a rat because again, he's called the Royal Rat Authority and when you kill him, you get a rat tail. But I just thought overall it was a cool design. If he wasn't as cool looking, he would be below average for sure. Next up on this list, we're going to be talking about the Gank Squad, which I mean, is this a boss? <laughs> like legitimately, is it a boss? I just see them as invaders. So the Gank Squad has to go into Jazz Dumpster, even though I love Havel. He's just not a real boss to me or that group isn't a real boss to me, which is why they're immediately thrown into the lowest tier Jazz Dumpster. I really want to know what you guys think of this. I don't see him as a boss, but do you see him as a boss? Next up, we got Dark Lurker, who, I, in all honesty, is a very cool looking boss. I really don't like everything you have to do to be able to fight this boss, because it is kind of annoying. But when you finally get to the boss, you find out he's ridiculously strong. And like halfway through the fight, he'll make copies of himself, or at least a copy of himself. His magic attacks are ridiculous, but I do think he's a well-built boss. I, I really, really like the look of him. He looks like a cursed angel, kind of. He has a decent amount of of attacks for a Dark Souls 2 boss, and I could definitely see him fitting in with the DLC bosses, which everyone knows are just objectively better than the majority of the bosses in Dark Souls 2 original. So where would I put Dark Lurker? I'm gonna have to put him in good. I just I just like him. I, I like him a lot. He reminds me of a cursed angel. Of course I have to like him. Next up, we got the Guardian Dragon. If you played Scholars of the First Sin, which you probably did, you, you already fought this boss essentially. I will say his arena is pretty cool. It just it looks like a giant bird cage, which makes sense. However, man, this boss is just annoying. The amount of times it flies up and grabs onto the cage and tries to just firebomb you, which I will say is probably realistic. I could see a real dragon do a dragon doing this. It's just annoying in a gameplay stance. It's just it's 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 annoying to fight. Who who wants to fight something that flies away every two seconds? You can get one hit on it before it flutters away. I do like, and I have no idea if this affects the boss in any way, shape, or form, but I do like that you can cut its tail off. Which is also a bummer. Dang it, why did they take that away from Dark Souls 1? In Dark Souls 1, you could essentially cut, like, everything's tail off, and if you do, you get a cool weapon out of it. This one, not so much. It's kind of a bummer. It's one of my most disappointed things about Dark Souls 2. I know it's very nitpicky, but it's actually my most disappointed thing. So the Guardian Dragon, where would I put him? He's... Yeah, he's, he's below average. He's not that great. It's understandable why he attacks the way he attacks. Just in a game sense stance, it's just not fun. Next up, we got the Giant Lord, who is essentially the last giant. Of course, they are different enemies. So I don't really have much to talk about the attacks because his attacks are essentially the exact same attacks as the last giant. The boss arena or the, the way that you get to this boss is pretty cool. He is in a memory. And seeing how this area played out because this is the place where you fought the pursuer is pretty cool to see like how this head statue happened to have rolled off or what was going on here in the first place. And I also think the design of the boss is pretty cool. He looks kind of king-esque, if that makes sense. And because of all the extra stuff, I would say that he's just a tad bit better than the last giant, but not much. So overall, the giant king or the giant lord, he will be put in mid, only because he's slightly better than the last giant. Not in moveset at all, but in aesthetic, uh, the, the boss arena, and, and 
you know, getting a little bit more lore into what actually happened to this place. Next up, we got King Vendrick. King Vendrick reminds me a lot of Gwen, and I feel like that's what they were trying to portray here, seeing as how I do believe they also share the same soul, or the, the, the boss soul, the lord soul, or what I'm trying to say is they acquired the same soul. So because of this, they kind of share the same fate in a way, and this boss hits like a tank. Uh, worse than a truck, he hits like a tank. However, in my in my honest opinion, he's one of the easier bosses in the game. I would have loved to have fought him when he was fully armored and fully ready and, and at his prime, at, at his peak. That would have been really cool. But instead, we got a hollow husk fight where he swings like a madman and misses the majority of the time because all you have to do is move slightly to the right. This is a FromSoft game. So overall, where would I place King Vendrick? I'm sorry, but you're below average. I do like the lore that's connected to it. I do like the idea of the... the the boss souls. I, I do like, I do like the sadness that is attached to this fight. It's just not that fun of a fight, especially if you don't have any giant souls on you. If you don't have any giant souls on you, you're not killing him. <laughs> like even if you have one or two, you're doing like 10, 20 damage. Next up, we have the Throne Watcher and the Throne Defender. And this is essentially an ONS style boss from Dark Souls 1. It's a dual boss, just not well crafted and they can heal each other if you don't kill them fast enough. I also don't like that they don't take turns fighting you. If if one's attacking, you better bet the other one is about to attack you right away, which I guess does make sense. But when you're fighting a dual boss like this, it's a really good it's a really good build or a really good mechanic to have one attack and then for that one to back off and the other one to come into attack, kind of like they did with Ornstein and Smaug. I know I say the name wrong, okay? I know. So where would I put the Throne Watcher and Throw Defender? I think they're mid. They're like, it, they're, it's not that they're hard. I like their designs. Their designs are very cool. It's just, yeah, they're, they're pretty mid. Next up, we got Nisandra, the final boss of the first, final boss of Scholar of the First Sin. And she's easy. I wouldn't say the easiest boss of any Souls game, but she is fairly easy. The only reason she's sometimes annoying is those stupid curse, I don't know, puscules or whatever you want to call them that she summons around her when she fights, which you can easily destroy them. Or if you want, you can just walk away from her and she'll start to walk towards you and those don't follow. So they can be really far away and you don't have to deal with them at all. I do like the design of this queen. It were, it, it reminds me of a skeletal queen or, or even a cursed queen, which is what I'm assuming they were trying to go for here. But just overall, I don't really care for the boss arena. I don't really care for how she fights. She attacks with like maybe three attacks, two swings, which essentially is the same attack in my eyes, and a blast, like a beam attack. And if I'm thinking about it, I probably had as much fun fighting her as probably Covetous or even the Twin Dragons. So, Nisandra, I'm so sorry, but you are poopy. So now we're gonna talk about the true final boss in Dark Souls 2, Aldia, the Scholar of the First Sin. And I can see what they were trying to do here with this fight. They were trying to make it so you had to take your time, you had to dodge some stuff, and then swing a few times and walk away before his barrier came back up. And even though I know that's what they were trying to do for it, it doesn't play out that fun, because essentially what you have to do is dodge a few very slow or very telegraphic attacks or attacks that just barely hit you and then you rush to him hit him two or three times and you have to run away because the firewall will 100% kill you especially when he powers up so overall I would put this guy right here in mid oh come on right here in mid there we go. That's where he deserves. That's where he deserves to be for sure. So this is my true thought out actual thoughts of the base fights, boss fights in Dark Souls 2. There aren't that many that I think are awesomely sexy. There aren't that many that I think are amazing. There's a few that I think are good. Most are mid and then the rest are, I mean, below average isn't crap, but poopy and below are crap. So let's get in with the first DLC fights I'm going to be talking about, and it is the three tigers. Now, of course, you don't fight all three at once. You fight one, and then you fight the two later on. So let's talk about the first one first. Ava or Ava? I think it's Ava. Ava, the king's pet. And in all honesty, I don't know why so many people talk crap about this boss. I found this boss to be really fun. Well designed, he looked cool, or she looked cool. Obviously, it's a she, it's Ava. Like I was saying, I think she looks cool. She's well designed. She has really good attacks. I don't like that you have to find a specific ring in order to actually fight her because if you try to fight her without this ring on, she's invisible. But overall, I actually think this is a very well-made fight. So Ava, the king's pet, is going to be going in the good section. All right, so next we're going to be getting the other two tigers out of the way because essentially it's the exact same fight, kind of, but you're fighting two of them. And if I'm talking about the fight alone, it was not hard at all. This, I'm not kidding you, by the way, is the first time I've ever fought them. I've never seen 
any footage of them. I, I, I've never watched someone beat them first. This is my first time up against them. And so I do feel that they do a good job at sharing attacks instead of just both relentlessly attacking you at once, which I believe does make for a better constructed duel fight. And again, like I said, I actually do like this fight. I like the design. The attacks again are essentially the same as Ava. But what really sucks about this fight is the walk up to them. Oh my God, it is the most annoying walk up I have ever experienced in any Dark Souls ever. They put you in this area where you can barely see five feet in front of your face. They spawn these just overly annoying thunder horses that will just relentlessly attack you. You can't even outrun them because they're faster than you. You don't know where you're going because you can't really see in front of you. You have to wait until the storm kind of subsides or, or dies down in order to see where the hell you're going. And at that point, you still kind of don't know where you're going. You have to kind of look around and maybe in the far off distance see like a chimney or something poking out of a of, of a hill or, or, or over a hill you know what I mean and then you're like oh I guess I'm supposed to go there yeah there's like three buildings you're supposed to walk up to and then eventually you're supposed to cross over into the cave where these two bosses are but oh my god just just the most annoying Ugh, I don't even want to talk about it anymore it's the worst place I've ever been to in any Dark Souls I I hate it so much. So for the other two tigers, I mean, if one of them, I, I'm, I'm just going to put them in good. I'm sorry. One of them was good. Both of them are good. Like it, they're, they're, they're good fights. It's just the walk up really sucks. Next up, we have Elena. And I got to say out of every single DLC, which there's three of them, all those bosses, this is my least favorite. Only because I feel anyways, it's just a reskin Sandra. However, she's worse because instead of cursing you periodically, no, she has summons. Her, one of her summons isn't bad at all. It's, it summons like three skeletons. Not too bad at all. A little tip. If you allow her to summon the skeletons, don't touch any of the skeletons. Focus all on her. If you want to maybe kill one or two of them, don't kill all three of them. Focus on her majority. Now, she will be vanishing here and there, which really sucks. But all of her attacks are very easily dodgeable or even just walk away a bowl. Some of some of her attacks you could literally just walk away from. However, if she summons Velstat, the Bell Knight, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. You're going to have a rough time. Again, it's not like Velstat is too hard because, I mean, they didn't make him any harder, but I feel like he has the exact same amount of health he has, maybe a little less, but the exact same amount of health he has when you fought him the first time. He's just as aggressive. Basically, you have a vanishing Nassandra you have to deal with too. He will do fire bombs that just float in the air, and trust me, if you get hit by these, they pack a hell of a punch. So where would I put Elena, Nassandra's, I don't know, cooler sister, I guess? Well, since they're sisters, they're sharing the same area. They're both poopy. I'm sorry. I don't care for her at all. I know in my other tier list in this video right here, I made her much higher. And that is solely because when I first fought her, and this was not the first time I fought her, when I first fought her, she, I don't know, I, I just felt like she was better. But now that I've fought, I, 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 have, I had to fight her like five times. Now that I've fought in her again, it, yeah, I, I don't care for her. I don't know why I thought she was much better on the 360. I, I don't know. Maybe she didn't summon the bell guy as often. But holy, I felt like every time I fought her, she summoned that dude. I rarely got the skeleton. Next, we're going to be talking about Sin the Slumbering Dragon. And honestly, I think overall, this is actually a really fun fight that can get annoying. I think the look of the dragon's cool. I think the dragon arena, the, the place that you fight this boss in is very cool. I think the design of this boss is cool or the look, like I said, I think this boss has some really good attacks. And this is also what I was talking about when it came to the ancient dragon, when I wish he could fly around and actually act like a dragon instead of just hovering from time to time. This one actually acts like a dragon trapped in a cave. He'll fly around all the time. It does get annoying, I will admit that, but he'll fly around all the damn time. He swoop. He does swoop attacks. He'll do fire attacks. He does. Uh, the, the man. The thing I hate about him the most. I. I, I just want to say this real quick. Every time you hit him, your weapon degrades ridiculously like it, to a ridiculous amount. I thought I was doing something wrong, and maybe I was. Comment down below. Tell me if I am doing something wrong. But my great sword was a plus ten for this dude. And every time, I, I think maybe I got six hits on him, maybe, and my re weapon was maybe an inch away from breaking. And sometimes just straight up did break. So I had to quickly change my weapons, die of course, go back, get my weapon repaired, and then make sure that I leveled up a second weapon that I didn't care that broke use that one, or I just got another greatsword, which is eventually what I did do, leveled that guy up, 
broke that one and kept my original from breaking. And so even though I didn't like the degrading of your weapon part, everything else, I thought this boss was super cool, very just, just well done if I'm being honest. So where would I put Sin the Sleeping Dragon? I'm gonna have to put him in Amazing. I, I know, it's gonna shock some people. I thoroughly enjoyed that fight. Even though, again, your weapon degrading is just the damnedest annoying thing. The next DLC boss we're gonna be talking about is the Burnt Ivory King. So I think this boss has a pretty cool design. It's, uh, I'm not even gonna lie, it's boss arena might be my favorite looking boss arena in Dark Souls 2. It looks so damn cool. I feel like I'm in the middle of the earth. Like I said a little bit ago, I think his design is really cool. He could use a few more attacks or a few better attacks, but honestly, this boss has one crappy flaw. And that is if you don't go around collecting the soldiers to help you fight this boss is ridiculously hard because these pathways will continuously spawn people. Some of them being mages, some of them being just regular swordsmen, but these guys hit hard and you're going up against the boss who hits hard and so when you collect all the soldiers you're supposed to collect before fighting him when they fall with you they break those pathways so that way you only have to fight the boss and so even though this boss has a really annoying thing in it which is it's just, just the additional enemies for reasons. Honestly I feel like it was just to pad the length of this DLC. I'm gonna put the Burnt Ivory King in good. I don't think he's amazing because of that just the setup man. I. Ah, I wasted so many hours just doing the setup alone. And also, I wasted a bunch of time just trying to fight him without getting those extra dudes, and uh, it's definitely doable, it's just really tough. Alright, in the next DLC boss, ladies and gentlemen, let me just introduce you to some of the best bosses that Dark Souls, in my honest opinion, has ever created. I know, it's gonna sound crazy, and it's probably ridiculously biased. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about the Fume Knight right now. He's sexy, straight up sexy. Honestly, he should be one tier higher. This boss fight was so awesome. The design of this boss, the way he fights, the amount of attacks he has, his pacing and how he fights. The boss arena is very cool. I also like how you need to destroy the things around him, which I do believe is the ashes of, I'm going to assume his wife. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't look up the lore, but I'm assuming. And you need to break these because he can heal when he gets close to them. And I want to say there are four or five around his boss arena. On the outside, of course, of his boss arena. But, oh man, if if they would have put this much time and amazing detail to the boss, to all the other bosses in Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 might have had some of the greatest bosses of all Dark Souls. However, sadly, we didn't get that. The only thing we got was a fantastic DLC boss. And honestly, if, if you're going to play Dark Souls 2, play it just so you can eventually fight this fume knight. I know that sounds crazy to go through a 15, 30 plus hour game just to fight one DLC boss, but I promise you this boss fight is really good. It reminds me of something from Dark Souls 2 or even Elden Ring if I'm being honest. I think this guy could actually fit in Elden Ring. He is that good of a fight. So yes, sexy. That's where he belongs to be. That's where he will be for the rest of time. Next up, we're going to be talking about the blue smelter demon. Uh, let me just, uh, real quick, just throw him right there. He's definitely below average. <laughs> like, just straight up, he's below average. Even though I made Smelter Demon mid, because I actually think he is a mid-tier fight, he has always annoyed me. So why would I want to go up against a blue version of him? Alright, so we are now finally going to talk about the last boss of the DLCs in Dark Souls 2. And that is Sir Alone. And oh man, when you talk about peak, the top of the top performance that a Dark Souls 2 boss can give, it's this guy. It's also the Fume Knight, I'm not gonna lie, but it's this guy. This boss fight is so damn awesome. Again, I feel like it could fit in Dark Souls 3 with the speed. I feel like it could fit in Elden Ring with the speed and just the move set. This boss was so much fun to fight that I'm not kidding you, after I fought him, I knew Game Plus it so I could fight him again. I thoroughly enjoyed this boss. His, his boss arena, is just beautiful. It is, ah man, I'm pretty sure I said the Burnt Ivory King is my favorite boss arena, but man, this one comes very close to being my favorite. It is just super cool. The landscape, the, the way you can see out the window and you can see everything out. It The boss arena is just very, very cool and well designed. His moveset is one of my favorite to be able to dodge away from. It's just fast enough so that way you need to stay on your toes, but it's also not too fast so that way you feel like he's overpowered and just overly fast and there's no way the clunky mechanics can keep up with him. It was just an overall well-built fight and and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I even played it again as soon as I could. All right, so that is my final score, my true score 
for all the Dark Souls 2 bosses? I really want to know. I'm very curious. I will be answering. And you know what? I'm just going to say this right now. I'm going to be answering every single one of your guys' comments. I'm not missing a single one. I know there's been a few. And I, 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 I pride myself on how good I do of answering comments. But there's a few that I haven't gotten to just yet. I promise I will be answering everyone's comments. Please comment down below and tell me what you guys think of my final score for all these bosses. Where would you place them? Is there one which you're like, you're insane for placing this guy here? Please let me know. I really, I, I, I genuinely want to talk about it. I cannot wait to answer some of these comments. But all right, guys, like I said, that is my final score. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw and want to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Forget the notification bell. Keep up with all my uploads. Comment down below, guys. Tell me what you thought of this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.